In this Debaco University video, I'm going to go over optimizing magnesium fertilizer rates for cannabis production. Okay, our goal is not to over fertilize plants. So how do we go about optimizing and avoiding plants that look like this? Here we're going to look at magnesium uh, in particular and its importance. So here's the research study and the citation that goes along with it if you want to look at the original study in more detail. So first off, what's the importance of magnesium? Why should we be concerned about magnesium? It is an essential macronutrient for plant growth and metabolism, which may be disrupted under magnesium deficiency or toxicity conditions. It involves the in photosynthesis by activation of the uh, ribose biphosphate car carbolase uh, oxygenase enzyme, typically referred to as Robisco, and as an essential component of the chlorophyll molecule. And we can see that located right here as magnesium molecule being right in the center of that chlorophyll molecule. And then here's Robisco, important for the photosynthetic process. It's also important for cell division, involved in the activation of several enzymes, acts as a phosphorus carrier in plants, is essential for plant respiration, and essential component, again, of the chlorophyll molecules we saw here. Um, so many, many roles that magnesium plays. Now, what are the deficiency symptoms? Well, intervenal yelling of the leaves, typically first seen in the lower leaves, or the older leaves um, on the plant. Of course, this is an extreme case, but did that intervenal, meaning for looking at the veins of the um, plant, it's going to be in between those veins. Intervenal is what that's referring to. Um, and typically, it's first seen on those lower or older portion leaves first. Now looking at the study here, 30 days after in the initiation of the magnesium treatment, visual appearance of the plants under 2, 20, 35, 40, and 140 um, milligrams uh, per liter of magnesium supply. The very top here, we're looking at the plants themselves from kind of a zoomed out macroscope look. And again, magnesium concentration here. So the lowest here is on the left and the highest is on the right. Then we get to the um, next row here. We're looking at the uh, youngest mature leaves in the second row. And then the older leaves uh, from the bottom of the plant, again, this will be your third row, and we could see definitely those older leaves definitely showing it here in that very low treatment. And we've got the roots also in comparison there, which visually may not have very stark differences, uh, but again, we're looking at the whole plant here. So what's the effect of uh, magnesium uh, supply there? Well, the effect of magnesium supply on macro and micronutrient concentrations in the leaves, stems, and roots in, of medicinal cannabis plants. So Leaves are represented by the green circles, stems by the uh, red triangle, and roots by the dark blue squares. And we can see again, here's our nitrogen, here is our potassium, here is our um, calcium, here's our zinc, iron, manganese, magnesium as well, and then phosphorus. So this is the presented data, and we can see as those magnesium concentrations change, some things remain relatively stable, uh, and other things have uh, changes, not always greater. So we could see that definitely at the low concentration of magnesium, uh, to then there's us immediately leveling off here of nitrogen in the uh, leaves, uh, the stems and also um, the roots. So leaves here, roots here, and then stems here. Others, you know, correlate differently. Here for potassium, we see an overall increase in our uh, root amount of magnesium, but a decrease in the leaves and also the stems. So just kind of an interesting correlation or a look at. And as again, we increase magnesium, we would expect magnesium concentration overall to increase in all parts of the plant. So what does this kind of mean? What does this kind of uh, relate to? And why is this, you know, why should we be concerned about this? Well, because magnesium interacts particularly with calcium as well as potassium. So increased magnesium supply impaired the uptake of calcium and potassium in their route to shoot translocation, demonstrating a compared a competitive cation inhibition. What does that mean? Well, calcium and potassium are both positive, or cations, as well as magnesium. We've got a lot of magnesiums here globbing onto the negative um, soil particles. You're going to impair the root here's ability to absorb those other cations. Essentially, it's going to kind of block or suppress the ability for plants to absorb the very important potassium as well as calcium ions. So having two I have one nutrient can block or suppress others. Now, what's the possible effects on that soil aggregates as well? Excessive fertilizer applications may have more impact than just nutrient levels. Possible effects of calcium and magnesium cations in soil aggregation. More calcium attracts clay particles together to form aggregates or form uh, basically a well-defined structure there. 
versus more magnesium repels clay particles and break parts, breaks apart those aggregates. The aggregates are important because we do want them to have that cation exchange capacity and interact with the roots. And if we over add our magnesium, we're causing repelling or breaking apart of that basic soil structure. Now, min-max um, levels here, because it's definitely a minimum level, magnesium deficiency symptoms develop first in those older leaves. It was shown at two milligrams per liter and progressed towards um, young mature leaves, demonstrating the ability for magnesium in plant storage and also remobilization it can move. Magnesium toxicity symptoms appear in older leaves from the bottom of the plants under 140 milligrams per liter of magnesium. So what's the general uh, target range and what could we add to correct this if we're below optimum? Well, the findings suggest that 35 to 70 uh, milligrams per liter of magnesium is the optimum concentration. Again, it is a range uh, for cannabis plant development and function at the vegetative growth phase. This may be converted here to parts per million or ounces per gallon. And this is again, looking at pure mag magnesium. We'll talk about some fertilizers. I just want to draw your attention to here that below optimum, again, is the red. There's an optimum range, and then there's above optimum. So if you get a soil test back, you want to be in that optimum range. Now, and this shows the above optimum kind of remaining level, but a lot of times if you get too excessive, it can actually have a decrease in yield. The toxicity symptoms can lead to a decrease in yield. So staying in that optimum range is really the target of any grower. So what are, if we're low in magnesium, what could we add? Well, dolomitic lime, if we need to adjust our soils or substrates, uh, pH would be a great addition. That contains about 9.5% uh, magnesium. Epsom salts, if we need to have something water soluble to water in, uh, it contains a little bit more magnesium, slightly, 9.87%. Uh, and for something continuous feeding wise, and typically plants need calcium anyways, a CalMag fertilizer here, which may only have 1.2% magnesium, but continually being fed can slowly build those levels up or really maintain those levels within that optimum range. Again, don't wanna get too excessive because then negative things can happen. Don't wanna be under, we don't have reduction in yield. We wanna stay right in that optimum range. And hopefully this study gives you that target of what that optimum range actually is.